Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Stinchcombe of Dianix, and uh, today we have a web conversation uh, with two special guests uh, from Apti um, on the why, the what, the where, and the when for digital adoption platforms. So it's with great pleasure I'd like to introduce uh, my uh, co-conspirators here in this web conversation. Um, Randy Bernard and Will Caro, who are VP of Sales and Director of Sales Enablement, respectively, for Apti Corporation. So uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. I think you're in Boston, you two. So um, greetings. Greetings, um, thanks, John. I, and by the way, I like that web conversation. That's nice. I like that yeah. web conversation. It's a new <laughs> yeah, one. Thanks for having us, John. Thank you. A pleasure, Will. So I guess the, the, the title is something of a giveaway. Um, you know, many organizations struggle, employees struggle with um, adopting uh, applications. So this is what we're gonna be talking about today. It's a subject that's very close to our hearts. We live and breathe this, uh, particularly uh, our two guests. And, um, you know, so if I can just kick this off, um, this is the first of, of the W's, if you like. In your experience, um, why do employees in enterprise organizations suffer this sort of pain of adopting digital applications? And secondly, um, does this pain ever uh, happen in smaller organizations, not just enterprise uh, companies? So, uh, Randy, do you want to, I'll, I'll throw that one to you first. Yeah, yeah sure, thanks, John. Um, you know, I think it's in order to set the scene, it's important to note Gartner estimates that, you know, 75% of digital um, uh, digital transformations in the enterprise are gonna fail, right? 75% of these transformations will fail. And they state the main reason for this is uh, specifically due to employees not being trained properly, right? So, you know, I think you got to step back and, and say, why are the employees not being trained properly? Is it just because the company is offering up poor training or no training? Or is it because it's tough to keep up? Because I'll throw another statistic at you. The average small business uses 102 different SaaS applications. I, when I saw that statistic, that kind of blew my mind. The average mid-market company uses 137 different applications and the average enterprise uses 288 different applications across the enterprise uh -huh. right so you know each employee isn't using all of these applications uh, but each employee uses quite a few right and since 2015 just to drop another statistic as we get started to set the the the, the table here um, companies with on average of a thousand employees they are spending $4.2 million on software today, annually, up from about a million dollars in 2015. So you take that all into consideration, you've got a lot of people, you've got a massive spend on technology, you've got hundreds of apps in some cases, and you've got a ton of people coming and going all the time. And, and you know, you pointed out, we're all working from home. It's not always that easy to just pop them into a conference room or lean over and ask Sally how to use a particular application. So you add all these things together, um, you know, you've got basically a lot of software waste, 30% of, of the spend, uh, IT spend is being wasted today. That's a, that's a good stat. And the orphaned subscriptions inside of companies are up 100%. So companies are buying technology and not even getting to it. So I'll stop with all the statistics, but I think, I think the problem is, right, it's overload, right? You've got new employees coming in. They've got a ton of technology to figure out how to use. Companies are scrambling to try to train them. And unfortunately, you know, the you antiquated uh, ways in which you would train employees on technology is, is uh, you know, not working. And Will, I don't, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, sure, Randy. And I, I think you hit the nail on the head with both the, the scale component as well as the strategy. So um, starting with the scale side, you know, it's something that in sales enablement, I felt firsthand, and John, to answer the second part of your question around whether it's a, a challenge for, you know, smaller and mid-sized organizations. Absolutely, especially with uh, the remote world we live in, you know, whether in, in our case, whether it's five or six technologies on the sales side or a hundred for a full organization that has overnight with COVID gone from, you know, working on 
in work workbooks or Microsoft to being forced to have everything in a shared space. The reality is uh, that's a lot to learn and going into the antiquated side of things, doing a traditional you know, Zoom or web conferencing training, providing some support docs, that might get people's you know, wheels turning for an hour after the session, maybe for the rest of the day. But even 24 hours later with the forgetting curve, people are forgetting 70% of what they were taught. And yeah. these traditional methods of live training and then, hey, here's a knowledge base and some support docs to go read. The reality is that's not going to reinforce the practices that businesses actually want to see because yeah. it's not just about getting people to sign into the technology and poke around. It's about using it correctly. And that's where most organizations fail. They might be able to get folks to sign into a work day in Oracle, a Salesforce, et cetera. But if your employees don't know how to correctly use that technology and use it to its fullest extent, then you're not going to ultimately actualize that vision of why you bought the software in the first place, sometimes out of necessity and sometimes just trying to improve your productivity as a whole. Brilliant. No, thank you very much. Uh, that, that's a great uh, coverage there, super informative. So, so thank you for that. So that that that's the why um, why organizations. So my takeaways from that is, you know, there's a massive explosion in web-based and, and software as a service uh, applications. It's it's a it's big money, whichever way you look at it, irrespective of the size of the organization. And so to really capitalize on that investment, you really need to enable uh, your employees to to get the most out, out of the software. And in fact, you, you guys uh, have a catch line, don't you? Which is, uh, it's not, it's the, not software. the software, it's how you use it. Yeah, it's not the software. Brilliant, I love that. You know, yeah. Before we move to the next question, if, if you wouldn't mind, if it's a Please. conversation, yeah. Um, there's another thing we, we say quite a bit around here, which is that the adoption is sometimes even more important than the software itself, right? Like you can buy any piece of technology you want, but if people don't end up using it, right? And and getting whatever, you know, sometimes software's bark is bigger than its bite if it's not used correctly, right? And if you're not ultimately getting the ROI that you're looking for, and I'm sure we'll get to some of this later, but you know, that's why, you know, we've all heard of this on the job training. When's the last time someone actually came to your desk leaned over and taught you how to use Salesforce like <laughs> while you were plucking around. It doesn't happen, right? We get pulled into conference rooms or to Will's point, we get you know some sort of a playbook plopped on our desk. But I think the other biggest thing that I missed in that, in that opener, John, the biggest reason why it's hard is years ago when software first came out, it was just one size fits all. You got a piece of technology and it did what it did and you were forced to use it right out of the box. Now everything is customizable. Right. Every single app that comes out can be customized till you're blue in the face. And trust me, companies are doing it, which make it, that that's almost what's making it ever yet more impossible to figure out because you can be an employee. I've been running sales for over 20 years. You know, I've been using Salesforce since it came out. But I can tell you in every single organization I've gone to, our Salesforce application has been, you know, extremely different so you can have yeah. a, a person who's using salesforce in one job and they're a whiz and then they get to the next company and it's lightning now or it's just set up completely differently and so these customizations and in, 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 in these applications that the technology providers tout as you know a big benefit is is one of the things slowing down the adoption in a lot of these companies so i just wanted to point that out no that that's really good and um yeah, I, I I really love that. The adoption is often more important than the application itself. I'm yeah. sure there's a, a few people that have been involved in career shaping uh, <laughs> situations <laughs> where um, you know it's all gone wrong, and they can relate to that. But um, so okay. moving on. So so what would you specifically? What what would be uh, what customers uh, should be looking for the essential characteristics? What what should they be looking for when they're going out? and considering uh, digital adoption uh, uh, solutions. So, Randy? Yeah, sure, I guess I'll start. Um, you know, for those that don't know, I didn't know when I came to Apti, well, be right before I came to Apti, I didn't even know that a digital adoption platform existed, right? So for me, um, I've been, you know, working with some of the largest enterprises on planet Earth with digital transformation but programs, but not through this lens, right? So. 
Um, the easiest way I could explain it for um, those out there that might be new to digital adoption platforms is think of it just like software insurance, right? If you're going to go spend, you know, $100,000 on an application or a million, um, would you spend just a tiny bit more to insure, maybe with the letter E, right, insure, that you're going to actually get the ROI out of that platform that you were promised, right? That it's going to do whatever it is that they said it was going to do for your business. Yep. And so digital adoption platforms, in their most simplest terms, the way I explain it to my kids is, it's, they're just a pane of glass that sits on top of any web-based application, right? So imagine a whiteboard with dry erase pens, but invisible, plat, you know, put it right on top of your keyboard. And, and that's what digital adoption platforms do is it allows me, the administrator of that platform to, you know, like I'm, you know, uh, building a football play, right? X's and O's and I can draw on the screen and I can teach people how to use that application. So, you know, the first thing I would probably look at if, 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 if I'm trying to solve this adoption problem and a digital adoption platform is, is one of the ways I'm thinking I'm going to solve this problem, for me, you know, I would first of all just make sure it's going to work on whatever application I'm using, right? Because they're all different and they all do different things, right? I think we'll get into that later. Um, some platforms are, are really good at some things and some are good at others, but at, at the least, it's got to work on whatever application you're using. So if you're if you've got a, a homegrown, you know, application that's been in your business for 30 years and it's got band-aids and it's been stitched together over a lot of, you know, a lot of time and in, in, in updates, you know, make sure that that digital adoption platform can work on a homegrown application. And if it's something new or different, just that that's I mean, I guess that'd be the first place I'd start. I don't know, Will yeah. more? What 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 should people be thinking about when they Yeah, what are the things that uh, should be on your essential list? Yeah, so I think yeah. there's really there's there's three components to it, and you can think of it from the three tiers of digital adoption, which is going to be from a leadership view, from a management view, and then from the user view. So from the leadership view, and this goes back to some of the stats that Randy brought in from Gartner, it has to be measurable. So you need to be able to say, be able to understand where you are today, where you're struggling, and then as you make the implement an adoption strategy how it's working and how you're improving. And it's a continuous iterative process. Right. Uh, from a management perspective, it's about how do we enforce and provide users the guardrails to do things correctly every time within an application, which today doesn't exist. And it ends up going from either micromanaging, telling people to go back and at the end of the month, update their project statuses, their opportunities, et cetera. Um, or folks are just doing it wrong and the data going into that system is garbage in, garbage out. You're not getting value from the technology. And the last piece is learning. So one of the things that digital adoption is really tackling head on is that training does not equal learning. And for an employee to learn and how adults most naturally learn, it's kinetic. They learn by actually doing, you know, watching a video, reading a, a support page that doesn't teach. Whereas if I'm learned, actually completing the action as I'm doing it for the first time and doing it in the application in which I will be doing it in continuity moving forward, it's way, way stickier. And I'm more likely to frankly not need that support again, but will always have those guardrails to ensure that I'm doing it correctly. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, great. that's very cool. Yeah, Will, I really liked the word you used, guardrails. You know, a great um, digital adoption platform, first of all, needs to be able to do on-the-job training and not just showing people where to go, but being able to slap them on the wrist and say, no, nope, nope, you went the wrong way, come back, you know. You can't leave this page or hit that save button until you enter in that naming convention correctly or dollarize that opportunity the right way or submit for your time off, you know, uh, you know, by following our procedures, whatever the, the business process is that you're, you know, trying to achieve. So, you know, there's got to be some interaction there where it's not just a tool tip that can pop up and guide, but there, there's got to be a little more than that to be able to stop and and, and not allow you to proceed and, and, until you've completed that business process the right way. So that's that's a big important part of it. And then the other thing that I think you've got to have, and I just I think Will already talked about this, but I'll reiterate, is you've got to know if it's working. You know, just because you know a town decides to put up a ton of street signs, it doesn't mean people are moving around that town more efficiently or getting to their destination any faster, right? So just because you put up a lot of uh, 
uh, notes and walkthroughs, that doesn't mean anything. You've got to be able to go look at the analytics afterwards and say, you know, uh, out of all of my different roles and segmentation and people in different groups in my company or regions, are they completing that process quicker, faster, easier, less errors? You know, you have to be able to measure it. And then lastly, mm -hmm. a great uh, platform would also be able to give you some predictive analytics letting you know when you're not going to reach those goals right when you know oh, cool. uh, for instance process is not going to be completed on time and and that airplane i mean we one of the the coolest stories uh, we ever had from why our company um you know helped a major airline was they had like i, I forget all the details but it was like you know 40 pieces of paperwork in order to let a, a, a plane leave the hangar Right. So what they had was they had all this documentation going on and people didn't know how to use the systems. And now hangers were sitting open for six hours a day. Can you imagine the cost of, of a hangar and all the people waiting there for the next plane to be driven in? But because people weren't able to use the technology or they didn't know how to complete the process, you know, think about all that waste. Right. If you're going to have that many people and that much money getting spent, those, you know, like, a, I don't know, like getting oil changes, those planes need to be in and out one after another. And that yep. was not happening. So can you measure and can your digital adoption platform predict for your business when you're not going to meet, meet the mark so you can go do some corrective action? Yeah. Oh, I'd love it. No, thank you for that. So those, those are the essential what's or some of them. Um, I mean, on this conversation, we're, we're touching the uh, the tip of the iceberg, I guess. I mean, there's a lot more, uh, certainly to APTI uh, and digital adoption in general than, than we're covering on this call. But um, th th this is really useful. I like the guardrails. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. And, and I'm a big fan of analytics. Then finally, the, 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 the very obvious question of, will it work with my application? Um, yeah, don't, don't go down that, uh, that path before you've asked that, that question. So, so again, uh, in your experience, where do they, the digital adoption platforms deliver the greatest benefit? You know, what industries, what processes, um you know what sorts of employees uh what types of web applications um and also you know how did they manage without digital <laughs> adoption uh, uh, platforms you know how are companies doing it today or not doing it uh without a, a digital adoption platform yeah so I'll, the, take a, the where, I'll, take a, yeah. I'll take a tiny stab you know um i think first of all digital adoption platforms are definitely like um you know, for many of us, they're like smartphones, like, could, how do I, I don't even remember what life was like without one, right? <laughs> so, you know, that that's for sure, you know, um, although, you know, we, we certainly managed, right? I just think, to your point, I like the way you eloquently said career or something. You mean people bought big technologies, failed, and they got fired because of it. Correct. <laughs> that's a subtle, eloquently, but, a career shaping uh, uh, decision. Yeah, career shaping, yeah, yeah that was nice. Um, yeah. You know, I think there's there's absolutely no question that when you have operated inside of technology with this on the job training, right? You know, this technology right at your fingertips. I mean, the support tickets go way down, right? Nobody's yeah. asking anybody for help anymore, you know, and they can't working from home, right? They can't, as I mentioned before, lean right, lean left. They've got to submit a ticket, call somebody, ask somebody what a time suck that is right so you know uh, how how companies operated without them you know but i'll tell you once you have one it's really it's really game changing um i think you know will might be able to take this one a little bit better i think for me you know if you have any first of all any application that's enterprise wide right mm -hmm. anything that's enterprise wide and anything that you've customized in any way I'd say if people aren't raving about, you know, how much they love that talk technology, you should look at ADAPT, right? Because especially because of all the ways it's going to cut down on 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 all the time wasted trying to figure out how to do my job. I think I think the biggest reason like why should I think this is where we're at is why should a company get ADAPT? I think you you can't forget um the biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons for employee attrition these days is job satisfaction. 
right? Like, and, and trust me, no matter how much technology you provide me, you can give me the 288 apps in the enterprise if you want to go buy them for me. But if I don't know how to use them and I feel inadequate or confused or frustrated, I'm not liking my job. And let me tell you something else. Not only am I not liking my job, if I've got all this technology and I don't feel like I'm a wizard with it, right? It, it hurts my confidence. It helps. It hurts all that stuff. But, you know, the other problem is, you know, it's like, I'm not going to do whatever you hired me to do very well. So not only am I unhappy, but if I'm in a customer service position, I'm probably not providing the best customer service that I could to help really impact, you know, um, you know, the customers, right? Isn't every single business these days, right? You've got to put the customer first. It's all about customer outcomes, right? It's about customer experience, you know, and it's, and it's, I don't care who you are, right? If you're, a major airline building an application, um, it, you, you care about how easy it is for your people to go book a flight, right? If you're a hotel mm -hmm. and you've got software in your, in your, in your hotel that, you know, codes my, my key, you want when I walk all the way up the stairs or in the elevator and get all the way to the end of the call, you want the, 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 the hall, you want that key to work, right? Yeah. So, you know, that's technology and, and there's no question that our technology sits on those technologies to help make them work. But, the other technologies that the human being, me, you, will use every day just to do our jobs, right? To put in for time off, to submit for, you know, uh, uh, to check in or check out or, or create an opportunity in Salesforce to track a customer engagement. If that is hard and clunky, then when I pick up that phone to talk to the next customer to, you know, to do a QBR, yep. I might not be at my best. So I think that, you know, it's not only about getting adoption, right? But it's about making your people being fanatical about making your people like lethal at their job. That's what those technologies are meant to do is enable them, not slow them down and confuse them. So, you know, if you want to, you know, give your people some technology that might arguably be tricky to use or understand, slap a little apti on it or, you know, you know, or, or any DAP for that matter, you know, to just take that and skyrocket, right. And get everybody using that technology, exactly why it was designed, make their life easier, better, faster, quicker, more efficient. I mean, that's what these technologies are meant to do. And adapt just is almost um, exponentially. It's like, it's like the, you know, the last piece to just putting all of it together so that employees can navigate all those technologies, get their job done and, and be happy employees and provide great customer experiences. So that's what I think. That's, I don't that, know if that, I went off great. on too much of a tangent there, but that, no, it's perfect. that's yeah. what I think. If you're a company out there looking to provide wonderful experiences for your people and your customers, that's where this stuff can really take you to the next level. Yeah. Mm. So Will, do you have anything to add on, on, on where they deliver the greatest bang for the buck, as you would say, your side of the yeah. Atlantic? Yeah, it's it's a it's a, a challenging question to answer, but the the reason for it is fairly straightforward, and and that's any company who is relying and investing heavily into technology to run their business is going to need and and right now we hear transformation a lot, digital transformation. Companies who are thinking it through the lens of we need to transform our business processes and practices using technology. Uh, absolutely need a digital adoption platform. So it's it is truly industry agnostic because I could say uh, industries with less tech savvy users might be a great fit. But we're also seeing we had a conversation recently with a you know Fortune 500 company with 35,000 employees in the tech space, and they were saying our adoption of an HR pro system has been a, a disaster. And they're like, it, it was a year ago, we had to move very quickly because of COVID and it has not gone well for a variety of reasons. Primarily the training program, you know, fell flat after the initial rollout. And, you know, to my surprise, they didn't have the luxury because of COVID to customize it like you normally would, where you take yeah. six months to 12 to six to 12 months to configure. So you know, with the with the when to use a digital adoption platform, you know, the the actual use cases can range from you we are going through a change management process, we're updating current processes, can be a new rollout, can be for new hires, reducing support tickets, can be making sure that you're serving your customers as effectively as possible, right? The the use cases are so you know, widespread that there isn't one that's like this is the sweet spot. Uh, but 
those that are looking for technology to be like a cornerstone of how they do business and do it at scale, which I thought was, again, Randy brought up and is so important. The challenge is if it's just me and Randy in a room working with tech, I'm probably going to get it right pretty quickly. But when you have 5,000 folks being logged into a system for the first time, the likelihood that just goes well with faith and hope, which, you know, as, as mm. the is is not a strategy uh well, i've got a i've got a general question for you guys then so do you think and I, my gray hair shows how long i've been in it but um do, do you think there's an expectation uh, of users um of software as a service solutions that the whole deployment is going to be that much quicker you know there's obviously the saving in infrastructure and building it into your environments but do you think that that sort of there's this implied uh, implication rather that the whole deployment is going to be faster, including the training and the onboarding and the adoption. Uh, do you I think, think there people was. get carried away <laughs> somehow in uh, I, software as a service? I think there was, I think, but those mm. days are coming to an end, right? I think, right. Okay. you know, I, I think that, um, you know, people got, you know, it's like fool me once, you know, you know, okay. and but fool me twice. You know, I think, some people got burned right they they made mm. big spends and they you know they made big bets uh mm. on exactly what you just said and then they realized that it wasn't as easy as they thought right once they rolled out mm. the technology and they raised the flag and they said go you all have this great new technology and and they yep. imme everything immediately came to an abrupt stop and they and they realized people didn't know exactly how to use it and it wasn't as easy as it looked right do you know how many uh, uh, do you know how many um, millions of people in the government here in the U.S., the, um, the, the government space, the, 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 um, the public sector, are struggling with technologies like Microsoft Teams and not knowing how to just use Teams and upload because they now work from home, right? Yeah, they they were sense. sitting in an office for decades. Now they work yeah. from home. They roll out Teams and they just don't know where to click to add an attachment and share an attachment with a team. Right or or to create a group, right? And no one is there in their apartment or at their home. So I think John, you bring up a really good point. What we're seeing in the DAP space is about 50% of the prospects that are talking to us about DAP are are doing what I call something reactive, right? They're mm -hmm. they're like, oh shit, I'm in trouble, right? I I spent big money, big time, big energy on a big rollout, and it didn't go well. And it could be, however you said it before, a career deciding. Career shaping. <laughs> career shaping thing you know i've got a renewal coming up in three months and it's not going well right so they're they're putting a dap on that piece of technology be it salesforce service now workday a million others right in order to save their butt right in order to write the ship in order to solve the problem and to start getting more roi out of that tool that they already invested in but you know about the other 50 percent of the prospects that we're talking to every day here at apti at least they're being proactive. They're saying, hey, in January 2022, I'm rolling out Workday across the entire enterprise for 25,000 employees, and we cannot get this wrong. So yeah. we're going to get a DAP in place ahead of time. We're going to build all this you know, custom content and get analytics going and get all this other fancy stuff I, I'm not going to go into set up so that on day one, when we roll out, we are insured to have exactly what you were just talking about, quicker, faster, easier, you know, implementations and rollouts. So I think you've got the early adopters, you've got the laggards. I think what we're, what we're starting to see is people are a little smarter. It's not just about buying technology anymore and signing the order form and, and getting somebody to integrate it, you know. And I, um, you know, uh, I think people know there's a lot more to getting it right. Right. And so I think yes. organizations are getting smarter and they're starting to be proactive with dApps um, in order to, you know, again, to ensure that that technology uh, risk or that big bet they're making for their organization. Would you mind um, before I lose my train of thought, um, I'd like to mm -hmm. go back to one thing, um, you know, and I just want to talk specifically because you said, like, when should a company know they need a dApp or what what are the indicators? Mm -hmm. Why, why, like why or, or, or how, or how do they know? I, yeah. I would say just listen, 
right? Like listen to your people. Like if their talk at the water coolers is that Salesforce sucks and it's a waste of time and they're burning two hours a day on administrative tasks, you know, just in order to like satiate their manager's need to you know, update the pipeline or something. We've all heard this, right? And I'll use Salesforce as an example. I can't tell you how many times in my career I was guilty before I got here of reminding my people uh, to have the right close dates in Salesforce, to dollarize the op, to put it in the right stage. Like I have done this till I'm blue in the face and I can't tell you throughout my career how many times I've made promises to my people, empty promises saying it's gonna get better, we're gonna customize and do some stuff, but guess what? When you don't have a DAP that sits on top where I can just quickly erase the screen and redraw the, the, the process the way I want it, what do I have to do? If I want to just move a tab or if I want to uh, build in, I don't know, um, you know, another object in the opportunity object, another, uh, you know, field that, you know, lets them capture some in information about qualifying, I've got to tell the guys it's coming. I've got to, you know, reach out to my Salesforce administrator, put it in a queue. I've got to wait until they get done with 50 other things. I mean, it might be three weeks or a month if that you know change ever takes place in Salesforce and if it ever ends up impacting my business. And until then, I'm just ripping all my people off the phone every Monday morning and pulling them into a conference room and I'm being like, guys, I've told you a million times, don't put a close date that's just the 31st of every month. When do you really think it's going to close? Or, or don't just, you know you know what I mean, all the stuff we, we go crazy about in Salesforce for now, on a Sunday night while I'm, you know, watching TV with my kids, I can go into my DAP. I can just scrub it off and I can put a little thing, a little validation in there that says, you know, if you don't dollarize, you can't see the save button. Like Perfect. You, I, I would, I don't have any gray hair yet, John, like you do. Uh, uh, but, you. Uh, you know, I, I guarantee you it's the, coming. Day it comes, <laughs> the day it comes, it's going to sprout like mad because I have been reminding salespeople to do things in Salesforce my entire life and making promises and trying to change things. And it's a brutal process. Whereas with the right DAP, you should be able to, in four minutes, wipe off the screen, you know, uh, draw a little like, hey, in that box right there, if somebody doesn't enter in the information exactly the way I want it, block out the save button and don't let them leave the screen. I'm just giving one example of the thousands, millions of things you can do in Adapt. But, you know, that 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 is like on the job, right? That's teaching someone how to fish. And that's the big difference. Um, that is the difference. Anyways, sorry for the tangent again. No, it's really good. Really, really good. Uh, it, it actually reminds me of a comment a Salesforce uh, partner uh, made during uh, some sales enablement recently, a local partner. And um, he really summed it up. He, he said that um, proficiency equals productivity equals morale, employee morale. And I thought, wow, he's thought about that one. Because yeah. unless you're proficient in the application, unless you know your way around it, not relying on tacit information, you know, and as you say, work from home, like we all are at the moment, um, you don't have anyone to ask. So um, proficiency makes you more productive. And if you're productive, employee morale uh, goes through the roof. So yeah. yeah, it's um, it's it's all spot on. So imagine how much uh, more more productive my one on ones would be with my people if I was actually coaching them during that one on one yes. and teaching them how to sell rather than you know right. giving them Action. crap for something not yeah. being filled out correctly in the application. Like what a waste of time. That's for sure. Yeah. So one for you, Will. Um, where do c companies typically go wrong when they're thinking about adoption strategies? So yeah, where do they go wrong, to, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I think I think historically, uh, we've and we've covered that at length. It's been just the approach has been, uh, you know, just a little too short, right? It's always mm -hmm. been up to a event, whether it's a rollout or new hires being out of onboarding, uh, and there's no reinforcement there. So that's that's the first piece. Now, when for the you know early adopters of Apps, what we are early adopters of adoption platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, what we are seeing is uh, there's uh, a trend where folks are really focused on uh, the means, not the ends, as in they're saying, hey, we're really looking for things like tool tips or a step by step in app navigation. And that is a key component to DAPS and actually driving the desired results, but it's not focused on 
where are you today and where are you trying to get to tomorrow and the actual outcomes you're trying to see because if you're giving someone a tool tip to make sure they click the correct pick field in a pick list it's usually because downstream there's data of reporting and that data is being analyzed to either make mm -hmm. decisions understand the health of the business or you know looking at identifying trends so rather than focusing in on hey we really need to have tool tips that we can be customized and put anywhere which is really table stakes in the game at this point yes. organizations need to look at digital adoption as well what is like the north star of what we're trying to achieve like we bought this software for a reason different employees within our organization are using it for different reasons if yeah. everyone is using it to the fullest extent and as intended which is just like what digital adoption is at its core what are we going to get out of it versus where we are today? And I think that benchmarking and taking a, you know, goal setting can be hard. And that's where organizations like ourselves and other DAP vendors have to be very consultative and helping people new to DAP understand the true power and the what it can enable them to do. Um, yeah. But in setting that, you know, leveling set and doing some analytics on where you are today yeah. and then setting goals to where you want to get to and using those means of in-app engagement in-app messaging you know some guardrails throughout by doing so you can not only see hey this is working and i can prove it to my organization our digital transformation is going terribly now i can say we just turn the corner and things are going to look up but you can actually iterate on that over time and say all right this is going great how can we do more how can we do better no, I love that. No, thank you for that. That's a really good insight. And uh, I think um, what I'm taking away is it's a more consultative approach up front and using the analytics in you know platforms like Apti to really understand the actual usage before you start diagnosing, you know, so or prescribing rather. So you diagnose before you prescribe, which is a classic. Uh, 101 consulting, yeah, nice. Yeah, John, I'd like to just add, if you don't mind, um, you know, our CEO, sure. he's so funny. He always, um, you know, he refers technology purchases, not only the ones we all buy at our businesses, but even DAP, sometimes he refers to them like gym memberships. He's like, you can buy all the memberships you want, but if yeah. you don't go or use them, like you're never going to get to the end state, right? And he, and he yeah. jokes about how many uh, multiple gym memberships he may have, even at the same given time for different gyms that aren't getting <laughs> used, right? So I want to reiterate what you both just said, just slightly differently. Again, for those to, to realize this is the most important um, point of reference, right? Um, and sometimes I, I, I've, I've been struggling, but trying to use this analogy of like a GPS, right? Mm. Like until tools like Apti came along, right? And I mean the specific way we are reinventing DAP and the way we look at DAP. Most DAPs um, are just saying, you know, let me teach you how to use the technology, right? It's like a forward looking, let me just show you how to, where to click and put up a tool tip to explain what a button does, right? We look at it more like from the end state, right? Like think about Waze. Waze is an application we have here in the States that, or, or like any GPS, a good one these days that you might have on your phone. They don't just look at where you're at and how to go to the grocery store or wherever you're going. They, they pick themselves up, they put themselves at the end spot and they look backwards and they say, what's the most efficient way to get them here, right? To where I am and what accidents are in the way and what do I need to route around? And so that's what we're really doing in the DAP space is we're going way out to the end desired outcome and looking at it from there. And it is a very different point of reference than just, you know, standing, uh, you know, at the start and looking forward. Um, and, and the other thing that we're taking into consideration is before we map out how our DAP is going to navigate people in the app, we, we not only have to go to that endpoint to see where that is, right, in a business yeah. process for compliance reasons or an audit trail, or whatever that might be. But we have to say also along the way, what are you trying to accomplish? Do you want to get your people here faster? Because that's different than getting them to this endpoint um, more efficiently or with better data or yeah. less clicks or yeah. um, fewer screens or uh, whatever and, and keep going. So, you know, it's not just black and white of like, I got to teach a salesperson how to create an opportunity, right? It's mm -hmm. what does that perfect opportunity look like? 
and how do I pull them there instead of push them there? And along the way, what am I trying to achieve? And in good DAO platforms like ours, and I don't mean to sound salesy, I'm, I really was trying not to do that today, but go figure, I'm a sales guy. Um, you know, we can set goals and we can say, hey, by the end of this year, I want opportunity creation to happen with 80% less clicks, 20% fewer mistakes, blah, blah, blah. And then along the way, we can just watch if we're trending towards that or not. Because I know if I set the right goals in my DAO, not just put up road signs, turn left, turn right. If I set goals in my DAO, to what yes. the desired end state is, I know I'm going to have happier people and my business is going to be running more efficiently. Like why else did I get a DAP in the first place? It wasn't just to put a bunch of tool tips on the screen so that I oh. feel like I have another tool to manage, right? It's about the outcomes. So yeah, I, I love it. No, thank you. So I think we've covered some of this already, but the final question is when should organizations uh, deploy digital adoption platforms? You know, in, in your experience, when, when is the best time in a project, you know, Salesforce or Workday project, when when should you uh, deploy DAP? Now, if you're in a world of hurt. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's the reactive approach we kind of covered. I would say, yep. you know, listen, if you've got a, a technology that you're about to roll out that you think is important, and maybe mm. it's important because of what it's going to do for your business, it's important because of the promise it, 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 it's made to your employee's satisfaction, or maybe it just costs a lot of money. You know, I would say you should at least consider and think, you know, I mean, I don't know, man, if I, if I spent a million dollars on Salesforce, hmm. would I spend another, whatever the number is, you know, fraction thereof, just to make sure it's going to work and people are going to love it? You know, that's the question I think people have to ask themselves with any spend, you know, and it's, and, 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 and it, right. Ever since I got here, it's it's begged the question, you know, how come nobody's invented software insurance yet? <laughs> like an insurance company mm -hmm. for software purchases, right? You know, we have it for cars and health and yeah. everything else. I mean, there's billions and trillions getting spent. And the statistics are that 30% of it is just getting wasted, right? So, yeah. you know, who's going to capitalize on that? I think that's what all of the dApps, us and our great you know, um, you know, uh, com competitors or friends in the DAP space that are building these technologies, more power to all of us. I think that's what we're trying to provide companies is software insurance, right? And 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 we like to call it with an E. We like to insure, you know, that you're going to get yes. what what you want out of those technologies. So that's that's uh, and, and and the most important thing is you can prove it because with the analytics you can yeah. do it before and after. So yeah, I, it's a really well made point. Thank you. Um, well, can um, you add anything? Yeah. Jeff, I could I'll answer it slightly, I think differently or a little bit more to, like tactically for a company today deciding, do we need it? The best time to Randy's point is we've decided what technology we're gonna use and we have decided at least for the initial rollout what the processes are going to be. Once those decisions have been made, like it's like, you know, instead of people process tools, it's tools process people. Now it's like a perfect time to start looking at all right now how we're going to make how are we going to make this successful bring in adapt in that conversation and we have seen companies bring us in 6 months before a rollout to really start planning and mapping things out and by the time they go live it's not this stressful scary event from a uh beyond making sure people sign into it right it's not a scary event because they know the employees are going to go in and they're immediately going to be guided through what they need to know based on their role Brilliant. Yeah, that, I'm that, that's great. One, I'm going to add one thing. We've talked about consulting. I, when I was asked to take over uh, and, or, and run sales globally for Apti, um, I made a commitment, and I've done this throughout my whole career, but this is just a Randy Bernard commitment. I've made a commitment to build a team and to run an organization that does not sell crap to people that they don't need right? We will not put round pegs in square holes, you know, so if anybody that's watching the webinar or listening doesn't know if they need a DAP or not, they could talk to us, right? And, yeah. you know, you may need a DAP, but you may need a different type. You know, there are other types out there, and this is an important point for people to know. Um, we, we focus on all three of these types, but everybody has their specialties. There's technologies that are inside your business, like the sales forces of the world, right? There's other companies that have a web-based application that people come to like a banking app or something, right? Yep. That we all log into our banking app and that provider wants to put a DAP on the, on the customer facing sure. part of it so that they're- So the external users as it were. External users, yep. And so there's different types of technology out there in places where you may put an app, right? You're either painting the inside walls of your house or you need a person who specializes in painting the outside of your house. So, you know, one thing that we have um, committed to 
uh, to provide the best experiences for our customers is to talk to you, you know, and see what it is that you need. What are those pains you're experiencing? You know, not just to sell you Apti, right? So, you know, you know that, that's, yeah. I think, the, the first place people to start is to talk to someone here or someone at, at, in your shop or someone and call another DAP. Talk to somebody to figure out if what you are struggling with is something a DAP can solve. Because let's not forget, there's a lot of other ways to solve adoption problems without a DAP, right? We're just one of those roads. And so I think you have yeah, to that's great. A little more about the problem in order to solve it. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a great call to action. And and yeah, we're, we're a big advocate of conversation so, uh, as well. So to anyone listening to this, I hope you found it of value. Uh, it's been very uh, enlightening from my perspective. It's great to uh, meet my colleagues uh, at Apti. Um, our partners at Apti and um, and spend some time on this uh, web conversation. So the call to action, if you want more information, is uh, send us an email, uh, get in touch, go to uh, apti.io or dianix.com uh, uh, and request a, um, a callback. And um, we'll be very, very pleased to have a, uh, a discussion about your requirements. So. With that, I will uh, thank you, uh, our, our two guests, and uh, have a good rest of the day, and we'll speak soon. All the best. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Nice